Good morning, everybody. Happy Memorial Day. Well, here it is, another early morning Saturday. Uh, smoke on the water coming at you again. I'm uh, going to share our cook with you again today. Uh, sorry about not washing the uh, blue off the new Jambo tires. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, Butter Girl is shiny clean and ready to cook this morning. All right. A couple of things that we're going to be cooking today. Uh, we have a good friend that uh, just moved into a new house and is having a housewarming party and asked us to cook for him. So today we're going to be cooking uh, three racks of, of uh, pork loin back ribs from Costco. Uh, the thing I like about those is the membrane is already removed. Uh, so it cuts down on a lot of time from having to deal with that. <clears throat> Also from Costco, we have a uh, pork shoulder butt. Um, looks like it's about uh, 15 pounds uh, that we're going to uh, prep and get ready. We have a pork picnic that I've already taken out of the package. That's about nine pounds. Um, I'm gonna have to trim the skin off of it. And we have a whole pack of brisket that we're gonna be cooking this morning as well. Um, so, uh, a lot of meat, big cuts of meat, um, but the nice thing about the Jambo is all that we have to do is concern ourselves with the times and our finish times that we put them on. The temperature will run the same today. Um, I'm thinking 250 to 275 degrees uh, for the cook of these uh, big cuts of meat and um, then we should be good. Uh, biggest thing is we need to render out the fats in them uh, to make them tasty and tender. And once again, you've heard me talk about it before, um, but uh, here's our go-to. Killer Hogs AP, Killer Hogs Barbecue Rub. Uh, the AP is a base followed by uh, top coat of barbecue rub. Uh, Malcolm Reed and his team at How to Barbecue Right and Killer Hogs, uh, in my opinion, uh, just has it going on. So this is what we're going to rub it up with today. And we will check back with you uh, later on as the cook progresses, probably about the five hour mark or so. Uh, until then, smoke on. All right, guys, smoke on the water back at you. Hey. Uh, got these pork butts and pork picnic um, opened up in the pan, getting ready to season them. Uh, just debating on whether or not I want to inject them with meat church hog injection. Um, Costco bones out their, um, their butts, and I just, I don't know, I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to inject today. Um, but the one thing I did want to share with you, let me wet my hand, get some of this uh, pork juice off of it, is the pork picnic. So here we have the picnic, um, relatively small, um, and here's the skin that has been removed from it. Um, you can't eat this, well, I guess you can make cracklings out of it or leave it on for appearance. Um, but it isn't going to take any seasoning. It isn't going to take any smoke. Um, I don't want to deal with it after the cook. So I opt to remove it, um, before I even put it on the pit. Um, however, I do want to share Then they're kind of tough to get off. Um, it's very much like skinning an animal, uh, where you get a hold of one edge and then you just start working your knife, um, underneath the skin. But one of the, the tricks of the trade, if you'll notice, is to cut a little hole so you can get your finger in there and you can actually hold the skin. <clears throat> and as you're working the skin away from the, the protein, uh, you have something to hold on to. Um, safety point though, uh, pay attention to where your fingers are and your hands are at all times because uh, you can uh, end up flaying yourself as well. Um, our last video, we talked about knife skills and such. Um, 
not too worried about it when I'm doing uh, pork because it will become pulled pork. Um, however, uh, what I can't stress enough is that you have a good quality knife. Um, and in this case, um, I have come to be fond of uh, the Dexter knives. Uh, they're super sharp. They hold an edge for a long time. Um, I sharpen uh, before each cut. I sharpened this before I started today, so I know it's good and sharp. Um, but, you know, people will say, use a boning knife, use a chef's knife, you know, on and on and on. Um, I'm of the mindset that you use what's comfortable in your hand and what you feel most safe with. Um, but make sure you use a good quality, super sharp knife. Uh, it'll make the job a whole lot easier. Uh, regardless of what you're cooking, be it a pork picnic like we are this morning, or if you're trimming up a brisket like we'll be doing here oh, in another half hour or so. All right, guys. Uh, so I got to get after it, get these things rubbed up, uh, get a fire going in the firebox, and get ready to throw these things on the Jambo J3. All right. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. See ya. All right, guys. Smoke on the water. Back with you. Um... I think we're about at the three and a half hour mark um, that we put our butts and brisket on. So take a little look there. I just um, stuck them with my uh, temperature probe and not quite where I want temperature wise to wrap. Uh, but I typically wrap for color and not temperature anyway. Uh, but let's take a look and see what we have here. Uh, we'll start with the brisket. And look at the color on that. Looking pretty pleased. Uh, nice mahogany. Uh, we're cooking with hickory again today. Uh, first cook with hickory. And <clears throat> so far so good. Uh, butts are looking really good. Uh, pork picnic on the right. And the two butts here on the left. So we talked earlier. Oh, by the way, uh, I just opened it. Uh, but we're cooking today at 275 on the Jambo J3. So we talked earlier about knives and um, use what's best for you, what fits good in your hand. Um, but just make sure that it's a, a nice sharp knife and one that you feel comfortable with. But the, there goes the neighbor and it's side by side. But the, uh, the other thing that I want to point out to you is it's, we use a Thermapin Mark IV, and that is just a solid unit uh, for instant read. Um, let me see if I can get it open here with one hand. So as you can see, um, it, it will read temperature uh, whichever way you, you turn the unit, be it upside down or right side up, it doesn't matter. It reads uh, whichever way you hold it. It is also backlit as well. Um, so it's super easy when you're cooking at night and you need to see what your temperature is. And um, it's probably the best hundred bucks that I've spent. And I know they're cheaper than that and they're on sale now. Um, I don't know, 80 bucks. Really doesn't matter though because it's such a useful tool being an Insta read. Uh, it's really saved a lot of my time. And you're able to close the lid uh, because after all, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. And let's just take a check on our fire here. All right. Close that back up. Nice coal bed. So, um, Again, we're going to wait just a little bit. Uh, we're coming back up to 275. And we'll probably wrap in another hour or so. And right now I have to prep the three racks of baby backs that are getting ready to go on as well. And then um, we have 24 chicken thighs that will be going on right behind it. Uh, the nice thing is the Jambo again holds a constant temperature there's plenty of room on it um so really all that you need to do is figure out your 
uh, stop times and work your schedule backwards. And that will tell you when you need to start your cook. At least that's the methodology that I use. Seems to work pretty well. And oh, by the way, um, clean fire, clean smoke, great barbecue. All right, we'll check back in with you guys later on. See ya. All right, guys, so smoke on the water back with you. We're still holding a little bit higher than 275. Not worried about it. I just put a fresh split of hickory on. Um, but we did wrap the pork butt pork picnic and our brisket is wrapped in pink butcher paper. And we have our three racks of baby backs on, uh, again, rubbed with um, Killer Hogs AP and Killer Hogs Barbecue Rub. And you can see that we have a nice hickory fire going. Got some good smoke coming out of that. The flavors should be amazing. It smells amazing. And next thing is we've got 24 chicken thighs uh, that we'll put on and in probably two or three hours, once we get the color that we're looking for on the baby backs, we'll wrap those, put our thighs on, and then start finishing everything off. Putting it in the Cambro to rest, and then uh, to slice, pull and chop, and drink cold beer on this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, if you see a veteran uh, in the store out on the street, stop him, thank him uh, for his service. Um, and stop and say thanks for those that sacrificed all for us to be able to barbecue on this Memorial Day weekend. All right, guys, check back in with you later. See you. All right, guys, 12 o'clock, Smoke on the Water is back with you for our final installment of today's cook. Um, got the brisket and the pork butt butts and pork picnic uh, and the Cambros and resting. And we just now put our 20 chicken thighs on in a butter bath and our three racks of baby backs are wrapped and tenderizing. Got to uh, render out that fat, be able to get that bite through competition bite that I like on them. Most people like them uh, fall off the bone, uh, but I like them competition bite. So try to find a happy medium, keep everybody happy. Uh, but it's sweltering hot here in the Arizona sun this morning. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna have a, a, a ending video for you guys on how the product turned out after it's unwrapped. It's gonna be left wrapped and in the Cambros and taken to the housewarming party that I mentioned earlier. And there it'll be unwrapped and served and hopefully enjoyed by all. Um, so again, uh, what we talked about earlier today, um, use a sharp knife whenever you're trimming your meats. Uh, make sure it's one that you like, that you're comfortable with in your hand. If you're doing a pork picnic, put a little cheater hole in the skin, something to hold on to uh, when you're skinning that, because it is kind of hard to hold on to, uh, even with the best of gloves on. And finally, um, Get yourself a good thermometer. I like the uh, Thermopen Mark IV. It's an Insta read uh, and it works really well for us. And remember to always burn a clean fire. Uh, clean fire equals great taste of barbecue. Um, and keep trying new things. Don't be, uh, don't be afraid to try new things. New techniques, new rubs, new seasonings, new sauces. Uh, hell, even make your own. Uh, until next time, which is probably next week or at our inaugural food truck outing next Saturday, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Be safe, watch out for each other, and smoke on. See ya. All right, guys, smoke on the water back at ya. Um, I know I told you that we weren't going to show you a finished product, uh, but we had to run a few errands, let this brisket rest a while. Um, so now we're just going to go ahead and unwrap it and see what we have. <clears throat> Again, this is the Killer Hogs AP rub, followed by the Killer Hogs uh, barbecue. Off the Jambo pit with um, hickory splits today. <clears throat> I 
And as you can see, it is making one heck of a mess. Let me get something to clean this up a little bit with. Sit that aside. All right, we'll pull that out. Um, again, not the best quality brisket that we've seen. I think a lot has to do with the the price of meat and the sourcing of the meat. Um, but we're going to give it a whirl and see what we got here. Looks like it rendered down to about, I don't know, 10 pounds or so. Um, so we're going to make our first cut here. Let's see what we have. And I see that juice running, that rendered fat running already. Looks like we have a nice smoke ring around that. So we're gonna go ahead and get this sliced up and uh, we're gonna call it a day. It is now 6 p.m. Arizona time. We've been up and cooking since 2.30 this morning. Uh, pretty worn out, pretty tired. So uh, until next time guys, smoke on. Uh, be sure to like us, be sure to subscribe to us on the YouTube channel and be sure to leave any comments that you may have. Thanks and have a great weekend. See ya.